starts right now. As a U.S. citizen who works abroad, she's always been told, you know, the U.S. Embassy has her back. And it's very clear that they don't. Right now on GMSA, the U.S. Embassy in Sudan evacuated, but thousands of Americans say they're being left behind as brutal fighting continues in the African nation. Plus, incredible video there. Imagine your dream home collapsing and sliding down a hill into a pile of rubble. How two homeowners in Utah are dealing with this real life nightmare. And back here at home, it has been a very active day when it comes to weather. There you go. You just saw some lightning on the screen right there. Sarah Spivey is in working through the night. She's going to give us full forecast in just a few moments. But for I now, that lightning. I know it was crazy. Good morning. It is six o'clock. It is Sunday, April 23rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Like we said, a very active morning. Right. You said you just got a text about your dog. You know, my husband said, Scoopy just ran into the bedroom. He, oh. doesn't like, he was he like I leave GMSA on so he can mm -hmm. be updated on the weather. Of course. But you know he doesn't like thunder, Sarah. And we have a lot yeah. of thunder, lightning rolling through our area, some power outages as well. Right. These storms are noisy. Right. Lots of thunder, lots of lightning. Dogs, children, everybody up right now because of how noisy these storms are. But I am happy to report we're not seeing any big damaging hail. There could, yes, be a few pea-sized pockets of hail out there right now. But really, the biggest impact right now is going to be all this lightning that's uh, moving through San Antonio at the moment and pockets of heavy rain as well. This part of the storm that's in Medina County is particularly electrified. It's going to be moving over into San Antonio in the next uh, few minutes or so. So we'll be keeping an eye on things for you. Again, I am happy to report that in San Antonio right now, there is no major severe weather, nothing uh, as far as large hail, maybe some pea sized hail in pockets, but that's about it. These storms are moving to the east at about 30 miles per hour. We're going to be dealing with some of this heavier rain here for a while, probably Probably the next at least two hours or so. So we'll be keeping an eye on the potential flooding risk. Now, while there's no severe weather in San Antonio, there is a severe thunderstorm working its way through Eagle Pass right now. This severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 615 this morning. If you are anywhere inside of this yellow polygon that includes Eagle Pass, you could be seeing up to quarter sized hail. In fact, we've already had nickel sized hail reported out there, but the area that we're most concerned about is this purple area about to cross 276 seven there in uh, Maverick County. There is the potential that these storms moving through San Antonio could somewhat strengthen, but I do think that this is just going to be a noisy morning for us. Take a look outside right now. You can see it's 59 degrees and lots of lightning there on that screen behind me. So again, a lot of lightning, a lot of pockets of heavy rain. It's chilly and it is going to stay chilly all day long. Now we have the highest rainfall amounts through about noon and then in the afternoon, rain really starts to go away, but it's going to be cool all day long. You're going to want the jacket with you highs in the 50s. I'm going to be back to track those storms, get a neighborhood view of when the most intense part of the storms may be in your neighborhood. And of course, we'll take a look at the rest of the day and the week ahead in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. And as we've been saying, we're keeping an eye on those power outages in and around our area. We have the CPS outage map pulled up on your screen right now. It shows there's about 2,500 customers affected. Now we're going to be checking in throughout the morning, checking in with Sarah Spivey. If anything does get updated, we will let you know as soon as possible. A man is in jail this morning accused of shooting uh, accused of a shooting after a chase with Windcrest police. So bond is set at $250,000 for 24 year old Jeremiah Corrales. He's charged in connection to a shooting on March 28th. He's accused of firing one shot at a Windcrest police officer who was trying to pull him over. Corrales was able to get away, but not before crashing a vehicle. From there, police were able to get his fingerprints from a rear view mirror. mirror. They connected those prints to an aggravated robbery days prior, and other suspects involved were able to confirm his identity. In your morning headlines, the U.S. Embassy in Sudan evacuated as a ceasefire in the African nation falls apart. Thousands of Americans are still there. This is brutal fighting enters the second week. At least 400 people killed in this violence, including at least one American. Right now, there's an estimated 16,000 Americans still in Sudan. That includes around 70 U.S. Embassy employees. The family of a Massachusetts mother says they're frustrated, 
frustrated with the efforts to get Americans out. As a U.S. citizen who works abroad, she's always been told, you know, the U.S. Embassy has her back. And it's very clear that they don't. A Pentagon official says the Department of Defense is now considering sending Navy ships to evacuate more Americans. The White House says efforts will continue to assist Americans who are still trapped in Sudan. And back here at home, imagine your dream home collapsing and sliding down a hill into a pile of rubble. It happened for two Utah homeowners. It's a real life nightmare. Just take a look. That video, it's a crazy video. This is the moment when one of the two homes slid off a ridge late Friday night in Draper, Utah. Take a look at your screen. Look at that. Neighbors also capturing the second home collapsing after the foundation gave way. The city of Draper says engineers are on scene trying to figure out what exactly caused the slide. One family says they're now in a rental and still paying for the mortgage on the collapsed home. Well, time now, 6.06, 59 degrees out. So to come on GMSA, a disappointing first season, Max. Uh, disappointing first season for the Brahmas, especially considering we're having the championship in San Antonio. There was a last second drama filled moment at the Dome. We have all the highlights and the reactions from the team. Plus, you're running out of time to snag tickets to our KSAT Fiesta parties. How you can get a great spot for the Battle of Flowers Parade, we'll tell you that next. And obviously, weather, the big story of the morning. Right now, we're looking at I-10 and medical. If you are out and about, tr please drive safely. We're being told this is down to just one lane. Right now, weather, the big story of the morning, rain. You can kind of hear the thunder where we are, at least. So make sure to stay with us on air and online for all those updates. See if we can catch another glimpse of any lightning out there where you can see the drops on the lens there with live cam. There it is. There it is. There's that lightning. I mean, we can hear it above our KSAT studios right now, and you're probably hearing it too, seeing that lightning come peek through your window. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Well, do you have plans for the Battle of Flowers Parade yet? If you don't, come join us at the KSAT Insider Party Viewing Party. You can get your tickets and watch the parade above in the grandstands. You'll get tacos from Las Palapas. Access, this is really important to your own private restrooms. Plus, you get to hang out with our KSAT crew. Sarah Spivey and I will be there. Get your tickets, head to KSAT.com, sign up to be a KSAT Insider, and that's where you'll find all the information. And we can expedite the process right now. Take out your phone, scan the QR code. It'll take you right to our Fiesta section on KSAT.com. We have a full list of events, tickets, and schedules. And yesterday, we really were blessed with some fantastic weather. Tried to soak in the sun because Sarah warned us that today was going to be a little messy. And she's right. It's right on cue right now, Sarah. I mean, li yeah. the live cam right now, all I'm seeing is like flashing light. Yeah, in fact, uh, you can see every now and then we get a little lightning strike here. Uh, and it's it's pretty intense out there right now. The lightning through downtown San Antonio is very intense. It's 59 degrees outside. We've got winds from the north at about 10 miles per hour. Again, just look at all of that lightning. Let's go ahead and take a look at the radar right now. We're going to track these storms. You can see that a thin, uh, a, a pretty substantial band of the heavier rain is moving through central San Antonio right now in between four 10 and downtown. We're seeing some of that heavier rainfall too. And anywhere you see these pinks and purples, that's where we could end up seeing some very brief uh, pea sized hail. Again, I'm not uh, anticipating any damaging hail. Hail has to be the size of quarters in order to be damaging, but there could be some pea sized hail right along 35 there uh, and 26th Street. That's entirely possible to see some pea-sized tail there. Entirely possible to see some pea-sized tail right near Jefferson High School Memorial High School area through uh, north downtown San Antonio. And then again, for areas in extreme north of Bear County, like Leon Springs, Bulverde, Timberwood Park, you're not really seeing the heavier of rain, but you are seeing some of that lighter rain. Really, the band of the heaviest rain is working its way right now through San Antonio. In fact, let's go ahead and look at some of these rainfall rates. Very impressive rainfall rates, I bet, as we turn on those rainfall rates there. Anywhere you see this purple and pink color, if this storm were to sit for an hour, it would produce nearly eight inches of rain. 
Thankfully, it is moving, so it won't be producing eight inches of rain, but this could easily produce a quick one to two inches of rainfall through the downtown San Antonio area, which also got a lot of rain uh, just in the last several days. Uh, so be careful this morning if you're traveling through downtown San Antonio. You know, it's usually those areas uh, that those low level areas through downtown that we see some issues with some flooding. There's also some heavier rain falling over Castroville right now. Even a pocket of uh, perhaps pea sized hail through Castroville. We can actually go ahead and track that uh, along Highway 90 again moving to the east at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. That could be near the Lackland area right around five. Uh, pardon me, 657. Uh, elsewhere, we have got some thunder and lightning rolling through Quero at the moment, and there is one severe thunderstorm to be concerned about this morning in Maverick County. If you are in Maverick County, southeast of Eagle Pass, you need to be in your safe place because this storm is producing quarter sized hail. That severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until seven o'clock. We're going to see the rainiest part of the day be today and then all of the uh, part of me this morning and then all of that rain is going to be moving south and east during the afternoon. So until about noon, that's when we'll be fairly rainy here in San Antonio the next five to six hours in the afternoon. It is just simply going to be cloudy and it's going to be cool all day long today because of the rain because the front has moved through. Again, notice that over the next four hours or so, that's when the rain is going to be the heaviest. By about noon, we'll start to see that rain taper off. Less rain in the afternoon. So for Fiesta festivities, the afternoon's actually going to be better for you. It's just going to be cold all day. 58 degrees for the high. Northeast winds at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Gusts up to 30. So a cold day, some nearly 20, uh, 25 degrees cooler than the average for the high upper 50s is a safe bet. Then tomorrow we will have some drizzle in the morning, patchy drizzle in the morning and it is going to stay cloudy a high only of 63 perhaps some isolated rain during the river parade but we'll keep you updated warming up Tuesday and Wednesday when we'll have isolated storms Tuesday and Wednesday night and then really nice on Thursday and Friday battle of flowers looks amazing so even though we're having a bit of a rainy day today even though Fiesta Fiesta we saw a rain out of a part of Fiesta Fiesta battle of flowers looks great I'll be back tracking these storms giving you a look at rainfall totals and hopefully showing off some of your pictures through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 615, 59 degrees out. Let's take a look at Transguide. We're monitoring a crash at I-10 and Medical down to one lane. If this is your route this morning, please be advised. You can see the water on the road, so the roads are slick out there. Please be careful. New Brahmas needed to win Saturday and some help today to get into the XFL playoffs. So despite an inspiring effort, could not get the job done. Take it on the DC defenders, roll the tape, trail on 19-3 late in the first half. San Antonio found new life thanks to a pick from Jordan Williams that gave Brahmas possession with about 30 seconds left. Patrick capping the ensuing drive with a touchdown run. The comeback was on. The Brahmas going to 13-3 run, taking a 28-22 lead over the best team in the XFL. Five minutes of play, but DC answered with that touchdown run. The defenders vaulted back in front. An opportunity. Wait for it. All right, so there we go. DC came back. I was a little ahead. And then here we go. The Brahmas right in the last second and just a little bit to the left. Heartbreaking fashion. And they fall and watch the season crumble 29 to 28. Definitely super sad. Um, I mean, it's pretty tough. Like, we've been together for the past four months from not knowing each other at all to now becoming super good friends and super close and, and basically brothers at this point. Um, and now, in like a pretty much a day, we're going to have to all say bye to each other. I couldn't be any prouder of the guys, man, from what they started in training camp uh, to taking the best team in the league down to the wire, man. We went toe to toe with them. Disappointing, but. Uh, um, I'm proud as hell of those guys. All right, so the Brahmas finished this inaugural season with a three and seven overall record. And I gotta say, it was great while it lasted. I know.
It was fun. I mean, it was a heck of a game. What a comeback. It's always next season, right? Always next no season. 621, 59 degrees out. After the break, eight to ten weeks of work all came down to one event this weekend. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, we're talking about the solar car race. It happens every year at Northside ISD. See the fierce young competitors this year in just moments. All right, now to that situation out on the roadways. You can see the lightning in the background. This is I-10 and Medical. Just a few minutes ago, we showed Ooh. you that single vehicle situation that came in down to one lane. Looks like it is clear, but as you can see, the vehicles out there, you can see the water on the roadways. That lightning is fierce. We can hear the thunder here in the newsroom. So if you are out and about, please drive safely. Be smart. We're going to keep you updated if anything else pops up. Good morning and welcome back. So there is a lot going on this weekend for Fiesta, but one event, Northside ISD, it continues to grow each and every year. It's a really cool event. We're talking about the 26th annual Texas Solar Race starting back in 1996 with oh. only 16 students from Rayburn Middle School. The event has grown bigger each year with over 47 elementary schools and 10 middle schools participating this year. Students compete against each other in a race to the finish line using solar powered cars. Look at that. You can see one on your screen right now really and they impressive. build them themselves. Each team of four is given a solar panel, gearbox and axle rods, but the designs and the function of the car depends on them. They work on team building and engineering skills as they try to cross the finish line. Today we're actually getting to use solar panels, which we haven't used in five years because of either overcast skies uh, or other reasons. We've been running on battery packs, so it's exciting that they're actually getting to use solar panels. Making solar cars is a non-tuition based after school science program for fourth through sixth grade students. This year, they had 1,200 students compete. And I like how she talked about the overcast. Yesterday was a perfect day to do it. Today, not so much. Yeah, not so much. Time now, 626, 59 degrees out. All right, we're going to take another look out at Transguide. Oh. You really can't see a lot here. You see flashing lights because of all of the raindrops on the camera lens there. This is at I-10 and Hebner. We really can't see what's going on. If you have to travel right now, please, please use caution. Good morning and welcome back. Just about 6.30 this morning to Sunday, April 23rd. Thank you for starting your morning with us. And it has been a loud and wet morning to start. That's right. I mean, you're probably hearing it in your own house right now. Sarah Spivey, we're seeing a lot of lightning across our viewing area and a lot of just good rain. Yeah, very heavy rain falling right now through downtown San Antonio, but I'm sure you're being woken up by the thunder. The lightning out there is really bright. In fact, uh, here's a look at the radar right now. You can see that really there's a, there's a band of the heavier rain that's just moving through downtown and central parts of Bear County uh, right now. In Northern San Antonio, South San Antonio getting some light rain, but it really is that central part that's getting the heavier rain. And this is not necessarily necessarily a hail event. There's might be some small pea sized hail on the west side of town, but we're not worried about damaging hail. This is turning a little bit more into a risk for some flooding uh, through downtown in those low lying areas that tend to get flooded and also quite a bit of lightning. In fact, I'm going to turn on the lightning counter right now. You can see there's in this picture here, there's 337 lightning strikes. Now the ones that are very loud, shake your home. Those are those positive lightning strikes and there's about 32 of those. So a very electrified storm moving through downtown San Antonio, moving through areas right now, pretty much on the east side of town. I want to go ahead and zoom in to areas nearer to Kirby. Going to go ahead and turn off that lightning counter there. Moving over toward Kirby right now where we're seeing some of that lightning. Sorry, give me a second as I go over to the east side, zooming in there. You can see right on I-10, just between Kirby and China Grove, that's where we've got some of that uh, potentially some small pea-sized hail as well. But otherwise, things are doing just fine around San Antonio. This is some healthy rain for us. Just be careful on those roads. What I'm showing you right now is the forecast for the day. It's going to be cold thunderstorms with us through the morning, but afternoon we'll be looking at less coverage. In fact, only 30% chance in the afternoon, but highs today are only going to be near 58 degrees. So a 
cold and damp start to the day will lead to a cold and windy day during the day. Yes, cold for San Antonio. April standards is in the 50s. Coming up, I'm going to show you some of your pictures around the city. We'll take a look at that in just a bit. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And as Sarah monitors what's going on in the weather, we're taking a look at the CPS outage map. If you take a look, you can see more than 10,000 total CPS customers affected. Now remember, we checked this about 6.02 this morning, about 30 minutes ago, it was only about 2,500. So we've seen it jump up a lot. We're gonna be keeping an eye on it throughout the morning. So if you are without power, if you're watching us on your phone, you are not alone. All right, now to the latest in news. New details on a warning from the Bear County Sheriff's Office about a wanted Uber driver. They say he's wanted for sexual assault. This is a photo of the suspect, 30-year-old Luis De Leon Jr. BCSO says he was last seen driving a 2022 white Toyota Camry and is believed to be on the run heading to Las Vegas. BCSO did release his license plate, and that is SPP7337. <coughs> Bless you. Also, a potential for him to have a temporary license plate. That potential temporary one reads 2325Y59. Anyone with any information about his whereabouts has to contact BCSO tip hotline. That number on your screen at 210-335-8477. And speaking of BCSO, crime obviously a huge topic of discussion around our country and around our city. That's why later this morning on Leading Us at 8 a.m., Sheriff Javier Salazar set to join us live. We're going to be talking about a lot. The School Safety Task Force fighting fentanyl, latest crime numbers, immigration, and Prop A. If you have anything else you'd like to discuss, you can actually submit your questions right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us later this morning, 8 a.m., for that full conversation. Of course, we are in the first weekend of Fiesta. Every year during Fiesta, people look forward to attending their favorite event. That's right. However, one event is growing fast. It's the second year of Sober Fiesta Party returned with a huge turnout. Los Patios hosted for the second year with 20 other organizations, including substance disorder centers and recovery houses. Brandon Dyer is a board member for Los Patios Community Partners, a nonprofit that's trying to break the generational cycle of substance abuse in San Antonio. He says the event is a personal one. Dad didn't like going to theme parks like SeaWorld and Disneyland. It was really hard for him because they sell alcohol in those places. Um, and he didn't want to be around that when it was happening. So these kind of events give these, these big community events, give a, a voice for those people who need, you know, just to get away from the temptation. The Sober Fiesta Party comes just three days after UT Health San Antonio opened a new 20,000 square foot facility that offers comprehensive substance use treatment services and research by addiction medicine specialists. One in 10 Texans struggle with substance abuse disorder, according to UT Health San Antonio. This new facility will help provide treatment to those otherwise who wouldn't have access. And talking about Fiesta events, today is your last chance to try the taste of New Orleans. You say the best food, Fiesta? I personally, okay. best food of Fiesta. All right, so day three of the Fiesta event starts at noon, goes until 10 p.m. today at the Sunken Garden Theater near Brackenridge Park. Obviously, stay up to date with Sarah Spivey. See what is going on before you head out there. The San Antonio Zulu Association says the New Orleans style menu includes gumbo, Red beans, rice, shrimp, creole, oh, See? jambalaya. Listen, I know, see, I'm mouth telling is you. <laughs> watering even reading this. Also, if you're not just going for the food, the friends and the fun, there's also live music and, of course, rides. Sounds fun. I'm starving now. Me too. <laughs> fantastic time now, 636, 57 degrees. So to come on GMSA, summer is right around the corner, and that means movie events for you and your family, where you can take the kids for an outdoor movie night. That's coming up. And up next, how a new generation of hat makers keeping the tradition of Fiesta hats going strong. We're going to take a look outside with live can. This is I-10 at Hebner. Uh, we can't really even see exactly what's going on because of all of the droplets on the camera lens there. But as you can see, lots of flashing lights in that area, lots of wet roads, thunder and lightning. If you have to travel right now, please be safe. And speaking of that thunder and lightning, we've been checking in a live cam. There's that lightning. We can hear the thunder here, KSAT. 
Well, we're going to be checking in with Sarah Spivey throughout the morning for your full forecast. Hey friends, this is Gabby and we are at Catalina's Antiques. Fiesta is officially here and we're putting together our hats and crowns. So come join us. Welcome to our hat party. These are my friends Gina, Yuri, and John Paul. It's right. always fun to get together with friends yes. and create these incredible masterpieces. There's a lot of people that came before us. The ladies uh, that were on the horse-drawn carriages at the first Fiesta Battle of the Flowers were wearing extravagant hats. So people just took that and ran with it. I think um, last year somebody had a tower, but it also shot out confetti. I think it was about two years ago, I actually put a little bubble machine in my hat. Um, yes, that's I remember. That's so yeah. fun. Yeah. So I, I think my most notorious hat was my giant Selena hat. I literally had a cutout of her done and put it, and it was a huge, tall hat. Um, so that was probably the craziest thing. Yuri, I have a question for you. Yeah. When did you get started making Fiesta hat? Uh, so I've been doing this since 2016. Ever since then, my hat's been getting bigger and bigger and bigger and better. I so right now I'm working on like just something cute and simple, um, but this is not gonna be my official Fiesta hat. Every year I premiere it at the kickoff Fiesta Fiesta. That's my favorite event. So it's so funny because the Fiesta parades, you know, we got the Battle of Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau, but I know that we call them the night parade and the day parade. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so usually I go to the night, night parade. parade. That's usually the one, it's, it pops off at the night parade. That's why you gotta remember to add lights. You know, you want to be all lit up. You don't want to make a beautiful piece of art and then you nobody see, see it, it when it gets dark. So no, I, make sure you add light. I agree. For and sure. a good tip is if you're going to do a hat, put lights underneath it, the brim, so you can see your face. So yeah. You take pictures, you can see your face in the pictures. Get all the light. That is <laughs> such a good tip. Well, and a good tip too um, is to wear a bandana under your hat to keep it sweat from moving. Too. Well, sweat and also it keeps it from shifting and moving around. Love that. Yeah. Yours is looking pretty good so far. So these flowers, you will see them everywhere. You'll see them on floats, you'll see them on hats. As you can see, you can use all types and they are super accessible at any store, especially during Fiesta. If you're gonna make a crown, you can use these or you can use artificial, but you have so many options. Battle of Flowers is perfect time to sport these. You can also get uh, cute little things like these handmade ornaments. Anything really lightweight is gonna be perfect to fill in all the spots and give you some height, as you can see right here. Gives me a little bit of height, so these are perfect for that. Then you can also add different things like the guitar. It's not lightweight, but that looks really cute on the hat, so it pops, it makes it pop. I can play a little tune. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know how to play. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and so what you see here, this insane hat right here, I made two years ago now, and I just keep on adding to it. So you'll find all of our Fiesta favorites, but also San Antonio favorites. We got Bill Miller's, we got tacos, Big Red. As you can see, there's some Fred's fish fry right there. So I'm gonna continue to add to this. Then if you have a theme for your hat, whether it be food, plenty of stores have little piñatas, like this taco piñata, that you can just stick on your hat with some glue and call it a day. So I have a big piñata on top of a hat. <laughs> so when I think of Fiesta, I think of piñata, I think of colors, and when I saw this big one, I was like, that needs to go on a hat. I just made my Fiesta hat for this year. And I just kind of played with it to make it manageable because it can be heavy. But I just <laughs> yeah. love the way it came out because just so much color it just reminds me of Fiesta because that's, always, that's what Fiesta is. It's about color yes. and being with your family and friends and enjoying everything. And then this right here, what we're doing is making memories. I'm going to remember this forever. <laughs> I love that. You I, saw I, the I hat. I saw the owner of Carolina's at, the, mm -hmm. um, at Fiesta Fiesta. He did like a Furby themed hat. Fantastic. It was awesome. The Fred's Fish Fry part was my favorite. It's very creative. So as we know, a lot of Fiesta events happening through the weekend. Sarah Spivey, are they going to go? 
on the ones with happening our heads. in the afternoon should be okay. I think so, Sarah. So I'm forecasting that in the afternoon, most of this rain will be done. It's just going to be cold. I mean, temperatures in the 50s. That's cold for us for Fiesta and windy with gusts up to about 30 miles per hour. But right now it's all about the rain. Here's a look at the live radar right now. You can see that the heaviest of the rain is through the middle of San Antonio and into the west and east side and then south of San Antonio. We're seeing some heavier rain through Divine Pearsall. Lots of lightning with this. Yes, on the north side, unfortunately, you're not getting the rainfall and it looks like the bulk of the heavier rain will stay south of you, but it's we're still seeing lightning strikes. Take a look at that. There's a lightning strike out in Kendall County right now. That lightning strike is about 12 to, to 20 miles away from where that storm actually is. So even though you're not getting the rain, you are getting some of the lightning as far north as areas in Kendall County. Let's go ahead and zoom in to San Antonio and show you where some of the heaviest of the rain is falling. Right now that's falling over China Grove. Take a look at that right near China Grove. You see that area of pink and purple. Now widespread hail is not happening, but there could be some pea sized hail there on the outer part of Loop 410 just before you get to China Grove. These are moving to the east at about 30 miles per hour. They're pretty slow, but I can put a track on that a little tiny pea sized hail core there. If it can hold together, it could be making it to uh, uh, the uh, East Central High School area by about seven Calaveras. Lake by about seven as well. Again, that's just that tiny little piece of potentially pea sized hail. Otherwise, near SeaWorld right now, Lackland Air Force Base, lots of thunder and lightning, lots of heavy rain. In fact, a band of heavy rain just fell throughout the central portion of Bear County. Take a look at some of these rainfall totals. I'm going to turn off the lightning here so it's less distracting. Right through downtown San Antonio, uh, between about Memorial High School and Martin Street, Calibra and Martin, about two inches of rain has fallen just within the last 30 minutes uh, or to an hour or so. And across areas nearer to SeaWorld, we've seen about an inch of rain, China Grove area about an inch as well. Even those areas that really missed out on the heavier of the rainfall in Northern Bear County still saw about uh, a couple of tenths, I believe. Yeah, a tenth of an inch of rain. Leon Springs, about half an inch of rain out there. Medina Lake, two inches of rain. Anywhere you see these yellows, that's about two inches of radar estimated rainfall. Going back to the radar right now, you can see that these are quickly moving to the east and to the south, but we are still seeing some heavy rain, lots of lightning, and there is one area of severe weather. I don't think severe weather is likely around San Antonio for the remainder of this morning, okay, but I do see a severe thunderstorm storm out in uh, Eagle, uh, pardon me, near Eagle Pass. It's out in Maverick County. We'll go ahead and take a look at that severe thunderstorm. Likely for quarter sized hail uh, just south of Eagle Pass there. We're, we're seeing that until about, let me get cue, cue this here. Got to turn off this about uh, till the next 30 minutes or so. So lots of lightning out there. This is a look at Converse uh, through our KSAC Connect feature. This is a look at our PENS user in San Antonio. A lot of lightning. We do anticipate this storminess moving out of here by about one o'clock. So in your KSAT 12 hour forecast, temperatures only in the 50s today. In the afternoon, it is going to become cooler and a high only of 58 tomorrow. For Monday, an isolated shower to patchy drizzle. But again, today the big story is the wind, the cold air moving in, and the fact that during the second part of the day, it'll be less windy outside. Warmer on Tuesday and Wednesday. Battle of Flowers looks great. Okay. It's good to know. I will be live on the KSAT weather app at 7.05, tracking all of these storms as well while we're talking about GMA. Thank cool. you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 649, 56 degrees. Well, still ahead before 7. If you've got a fear of missing out on all the Fiesta parades, I definitely have that. We've got you covered how you can catch all the action this week. And as we've been tracking all this weather, taking a live look out of the roadways, you can actually see the Trans Guide camera shaking because of that wind. Obviously, raindrops on there. That's I-10 at Hebner. You can see the police vehicles out and about. If you are headed in that direction, just be cognizant. You can still see vehicles driving on that portion of the road. 
If anything else pops up, we'll keep you posted. Good morning and welcome back in your morning spotlight. Mostly everyone loves movies. Are you a movie person? Yeah, I would, I would say so. And while sitting at home watching them is relaxing, it can sometimes be boring for the kids. All right, so there are several venues across San Antonio that are showing free movies this summer. Get you out of the house. All right, so take a look. Starting in Bilverde, you can enjoy free movies this summer at the Bilverde Community Park located at 30, 360 Cougar Bend. Movies start at dusk. On May 12th, you can watch Wally. -E. Oh, Classic. such a cute movie. On June 9th, it's DC League of Super Pets. Never saw it. And over at the Pearl, you can check out movies starting at dusk on April 24th. The movie is the top rated movie of the year. Oh, this is a classic. Top Gun. Ah, oh, great Need movie. it. Blankets, lawn chairs, snacks, and picnics all encouraged. At Mission Marquee Plaza, bring your blankets, lawn chairs, snacks. The slab cinema movies will take place at 3100 Roosevelt Avenue on May 6th. It's The Lion King. Okay. Another classic followed by this classic, Grease, on May 18th. And on May 20th, it's Black Panther. And over at the rim, grab a drink from Tiny Cantina. Bring chairs and blankets this summer for the summer movie th series. Located at 17,703 Lock and Terra Parkway, June 21st, Monsters University, followed by School Rock on July 19th. Movies start at 8.30 p.m. So two of my favorite movies. And shirts, Slab Cinema's free movies start at dusk as well. And here's a San Antonio favorite, one of mine as well. Selena on May 5th will show at Pickerel Park, located on 103 Oak Street on June 9th. A League of Their Own will show at the Johnny Ma McDowell Sports Complex. It's located in the, at 955 Community Circle Drive. All right, finally, I know we've read a lot, but we're giving you a lot of options here. Long summer, grab a blanket, enjoy a family-friendly motion picture under the stars at the Tower of America's, oh, this is so awesome. May 13th, you can see Sing 2. June 10th, Pirates of the Caribbean. July 8th, they're showing Bad Guys. Movies start at sunset. These are just a few of the free movies showing across our area through the summer. Always, ksat.com, we have the full list, everything you need to know. Time now, 6.55, about 60 degrees out. We'll be right back with final weather. Before we go, if you can't make, out to, make it out to any of the Fiesta parades, you can still catch all the action right here on TV. All right, we're going to be broadcasting the Texas Cavaliers River Parade on Monday, the Battle of Flowers, next Friday, Fiesta Flambeau, Saturday, right here on KSAT. You can watch any of them as well on our digital platforms. And a lot of those Fiesta events today looking like they're in question, Sarah. A, yep, because we have a stormy start to Sunday, but I will say that afternoon, it does look like our rain chances are really going to come down. It's 56 degrees outside right now, stormy, and it's going to stay in the 50s all day. It's going to be a cool day for us. Take a look at the live radar. We've got a lot of storminess in so southern San Antonio, out to the east toward Floresville, Cuero, Gonzalez, and then down toward Pleasanton and Pearsall. This is slowly going to push east throughout the remainder of the day, and as you look at your Sunday forecast in San Antonio afternoon. Our rain chances are going to be a lot less, but it's going to stay chilly all day long. Temperatures in the 50s, gusty winds up to about 30 miles per hour from the northeast. And then tomorrow for Battle of Flowers during the, uh, pardon me, tomorrow's the river parade. During uh, Monday, we are going to have uh, cloudy conditions with patchy drizzle, high of only 63, warming up until we get to Battle of Flowers on Friday when the weather should be great. Highs only in the 80s. I am going to be live tracking the rain uh, on the KSAT Weather Authority app. And of course, I'll be with you throughout Good Morning America as well. All right. Well, thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We know there's a lot going on. Before we go, almost about 12,000 customers affected right now by the well, good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. We have had a lot of rain around San Antonio and south and east of San Antonio this morning. That's where the heaviest of the rain is. Southern Bear County, Atascosa County, Frio County, and actually in Cuero right now, there's a severe thunderstorm warning for golf ball sized hail. Uh, but here in San Antonio, our severe threat is done. It's just cold and rainy. I do expect the rain to come to an end, though, after noon. So it'll just be cloudy and cool, though, with a high of 58. 
Good morning, everyone. What a loud storm early in the morning hours. Lots of lightning and thunder around San Antonio, but as you can see, the heaviest of the rainfall now is pushing through Atascosa County, Floresville and Wilson County, and we've even got a severe thunderstorm warning for DeWitt County. This severe thunderstorm warning for Quero in effect until 815 this morning uh, for up to golf ball sized hail. Now, I do believe that the severe weather threat is pretty much over for San Antonio, but we are still seeing lots of lightning here, heavier rain near Elmendorf, and it is cold out there. Temperatures are only in the 50s. I say cold for April standards, right? We'll be in the 50s throughout the day today. Rain will be coming to an end, uh, especially after noon. So don't expect much rain this afternoon if you want to celebrate Fiesta. It's still just going to be cold and cloudy out there. Highs only in the 50s. We'll have wind gusts from the northeast up to about 30 miles per hour. So stay warm and dry, everyone. Heaviest of the rain falling in Atascosa County, Wilson County, and out to the east. But in San Antonio, we are still. Pedro, you can see some uh, flooding there of the lower levels of 35 at San Pedro. It's going to be cold in. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and thank you for starting your morning with us, taking a live look out there. All right, it seems a lot more calm than how we started the morning. Now, earlier when we showed you live cam, we saw the lightning we heard the thunder here at the studio in fact a lot of the live cams were actually just filled with raindrops right now looking a lot more calm obviously weather is the story of the morning so thank you so much for starting your sunday with us the first sunday of fiesta 8 a.m right now but we were talking this morning, your dogs were petrified from all the thunder. Oh, oh, poor things, they were scared. They were just like under the covers. But the good thing is, for the most part, here in San Antonio, we're not hearing the thunder over KSAT right now. But I know, Sarah, that's really not the case for all of our viewing area. That's exactly right. So for San Antonio, the most intense part of the storm is, is over. We had a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder, woke a lot of people up a little bit early this Sunday morning. And it's 55 degrees with the stout wind from the north gusting up up to 30. Now the story in San Antonio transitions to a cold and blustery day with a few remaining showers. But as we take a look at the radar right now, there is some very heavy rain pushing through Atascosa County right now. Even some small pea sized hail possible for parts of DeWitt County, Carnes County as well. The good news is there's no severe thunderstorm warnings uh, for uh, most of our viewing area. There is one severe thunderstorm warning for Webb County for the potential for golf ball sized hail, but that is well south of San Antonio and south of our KSAT 12 viewing area. Still something to be keeping in mind is that it is going to be pretty loud for Atascosa County for a good chunk of this morning. And there is some uh, storm activity out uh, south of Hondo that has the potential to move up into San Antonio. But most of us are starting to see if any rain, just some light rain at the moment. So for the rest of your Sunday, here's how the forecast looks this morning. Widespread rain, but by noon, the rain really starts to come to an end and it's going to stay chilly today because it's going to stay cloudy. 58 degrees for the high and with stout wind from the northeast at 15 to 20. So there is good news if you want to enjoy some time outdoors in Fiesta in the afternoon. No rain. You're just going to really need to bundle up pretty uh, well. Now coming up, I've got to look at some of your pictures and a better look at the radar. I'll be tracking the most intense part of those storms through neighborhoods south of San Antonio. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And as you track the storms, we're keeping our eyes out on weather related electricity outages. This is the CPS outage map you're seeing on your screen right now. And we've been tracking through the morning. We started at 6 a.m. There was only 2,500 customers affected right now. As you can see, more than 12,000. So we know a lot of homes, a lot of businesses without power. We do know that CPS is out and about doing what they can to adjust accordingly. New this morning, San Antonio firefighters worked to put out a small attic fire at a home on the city's west side. Now, this happened just before 7 o'clock this morning in the 8,000 block of Widgeon Street. That's near Cable Ranch Road. Firefighters say a lightning strike caused a fire in the home's attic. There was no one home at the time. Firefighters were able to put it out quickly. A man in jail this morning accused of shooting at a Windcrest police officer after a chase. So take a look. The bond is now set at $250,000 for this man, 24-year-old Jeremiah Corrales. Now he's charged in connection to a shooting that happened on March 28th. Accused of firing one gunshot at a Windcrest police officer who was trying to pull him over. 
Corrales was able to get away, but not before crashing the vehicle. From there, police were able to get his fingerprints from a rearview mirror. They connected those prints to an aggravated robbery days prior, and other suspects involved were able to confirm the suspect's identity. San Antonio man is in jail after police say his two-year-old child was rushed to the hospital for a fentanyl exposure. According to arrest records, 33-year-old Jonathan Hampton was arrested yesterday on a charge of injury to a child bodily injury. The incident happened back on October 4th of 2022. First responders received a report of a fentanyl overdose and administered Narcan to the child. She became alert shortly after. Police say Hampton was giving them different stories about how the child got a hold of the drug. His bond has been set at $40,000. Well, it is the first weekend of Fiesta, and every year people are expecting to attend their favorite event. And though only it is only in its second year, Sober Fiesta Party returned with an even bigger and better turnout. Los Patios hosted this event with 20 other organizations, including substance disorder centers and recovery houses. Brandon Dyer is a board member for Los Patios Community Partners. It's a nonprofit that's trying to break this generational cycle of substance abuse in San Antonio. And this event, well, it's especially personal to Dyer. My dad didn't like going to theme parks like SeaWorld and Disneyland. It was really hard for him because they sell alcohol in those places. Um, and he didn't want to be around that when it was happening. So these kind of events give these, these big community events, give a, a voice for those people who need, you know, just to get away from the temptation. So the Sober Fiesta comes just three days after UT Health San Antonio opened up that new 20,000 square foot facility. And that facility offers comprehensive substance use treatment services and even research by addiction medicine specialists. This new facility will help provide treatment to those who otherwise may not have had access. Well, crime, obviously a big topic of discussion around our country, around our city, and around our county. That's why joining us in today's leading SA segment is Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. Good morning, Sheriff. Thank you so much time for making time for us. And Viva Fiesta, I hope your Fiesta week is off to a good start. Good morning, Max and Sarah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Viva Fiesta. We had a great time yesterday. We were at all kinds of events. Today is a little bit more about honey-do lists. <laughs> all right, so, Sheriff, as we are talking about Fiesta, before we even really dive into any of the crime questions, you know, what does Fiesta monitoring look like for you guys? Well, for us, it's, it's monitoring the highways. Uh, you know, you may have seen on social media the other night our PIO group went out with our traffic and, uh, and, and DWI unit, and they made some arrests. I mean, that, that's really what it looks like. Some of our deputies are working some of the, the events in the city and, and, and out, and like Oyster Bank, we're, we're uh, got a lot of deputies out there. So it, it looks pretty much like it does every year. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so tell us about the School Safety Task Force. Well, the School Safety Task Force was formed up as kind of a pilot project. We picked, uh, you know, two school districts that are adjacent to each other where we were, we were seeing kind of an uptick in, in uh, activities uh, regarding uh, drugs and weapons. And so what we're intending to do is work that area till the end of the school year. At the end of it, gauge our metrics and see if it's something that we want to take countywide. And what are the, the two schools? Uh, Northside ISD and Southwest ISD. Uh, we have really great partnerships with both, both those police departments. Uh, we, we, you know, let them know that we were intending to come in if they wanted to have somebody work with us. And so, yes, the, the, the three agencies have been working together really, really well and seeing some results, as a matter of fact. All right, so you, you bring up the, the drugs and the violence around schools. One drug that's really on the top of so many families' minds, fentanyl. Huge problem around the country, around our county. So what exactly is being done to fight the problem? And, and are you seeing that problem at schools? Well, we're not necessarily in schools with the fentanyl to, to a large extent. I mean, it's something that we do see, but we have seen some, some young folks die as a result of, of fentanyl. So one of the things that we're doing is that uh, I myself have started teaching a course. It's called One Pill Can Kill. It's DEA information that they gave over to us. And we do a presentation. Uh, I, I have a couple of angel moms, uh, moms that have lost uh, children to fentanyl. And uh, they come out and they teach the course with me. We open it up to Q&A. To get one scheduled, we'll come out to wherever you are. Uh, and the email that you can, you can send an email to to request one of these presentations is onepill at bear.org. Onepill at bear.org. And Sheriff, we just ran a story of a local teen caught with drugs and guns. So what do our latest crime numbers look like? Are there any particular trends that jump out to you? 
Yeah, absolutely. Locally, the drug that we're seeing a lot with young kids is THC vape cartridges. Um, the, the, you know, just so parents can educate themselves, we actually have a PSA that we produced on THC to let parents know what it is and what it looks like. The scary thing about this is it can look like anything and it can smell like anything. Um, parents say, well, I never, I never smell marijuana coming from their room and this doesn't smell like that. The effects of it are much, much higher. It can be made to smell like cotton candy, perfume, potpourri, things like that. But what the really scary part about this is what we've seen kids are willing to do to each other to get this drug. We've actually seen some murders as a result of a $30 hit of THC cartridges. So obviously the last month or so, we had a lot of those top headlines being human smuggling cases. You know, is that still a big prevalent issue? And then we know, I believe May 11th, Title 42 expected to be lifted. You know, what does that mean for our local central South Texas law enforcement? Well, from our federal partners and our state partners, we are hearing that it's going to be an influx of, of folks coming in. And, you know, what that means is, is money for the cartels. They are making money hand over fist. And unfortunately, our current approach to it, I believe, is, is really just enriching the cartels. Uh, you know, we need to try to find a way to, uh, you know, absolutely, you know, welcome folks that are looking for a better life. But we also have to stop enriching the cartels to the extent that we have. The cartels are behind not just the smuggling uh, issue that we've talked about, but also the fentanyl issue that we talked about. And quite frankly, they're behind a lot of our local crime that we're seeing. All right, Sheriff, before we go, Prop A is on the upcoming ballot. So what are your thoughts if passed and what could that mean for our community? Well, I've, I've you know, I would certainly wouldn't because we're not we don't enforce uh uh, city ordinances. We don't enforce city code. I certainly wouldn't be able to tell anybody vote for it. Don't for it. Don't vote for it. What I can tell you though is that it won't affect Bear County deputies. Really, uh, this is this will affect if it uh, if it were to come to pass, it would affect the city of San Antonio. But but my deputies will still continue to enforce state laws. As far as chokeholds, we don't do chokeholds. We we ban chokeholds. Um, you know, so so there's some things in there that we already are complying with. But as far as the theft of service and and graffiti type stuff. We will still be enforcing state law as it's written. All right, Sheriff Javier Salazar, thank you so much for your time this morning. Anyone who missed any part of that interview, we're going to have the whole thing posted on ksat.com throughout the morning. Time now, 8-11, 55 degrees out. All right, next we introduce you to this year's El Rey Fido in his <laughs> royal court. All right, before we head to break, we're taking a live look out at the roadways. So, as you can imagine, with all this weather, there's been some situations developing on the roadways. It looks like there's a box truck that is pulled over to the side of the road with those flashing lights. This is 35 at Judson. Remember, with the wet roads, if you are out and about today, make sure to drive safely. Be smart. On cue, there is a fire truck I saw that. right there, either to an incident or we don't know what. So please be safe out there. But like Sarah Spivey has told us, things calmer now in San Antonio area, not so much for our outside viewing area. She'll tell us about that when we come back. This year's El Rey Fido 21 in his court was crowned yesterday. Take a look, the San Antonio Humane Society event hosted by Hops and Hounds carried out in true fiesta spirit from folklorico dancers to dogs in their best fiesta attire. This year's El Rey Fido 21 is flag and his Royal 2023 Royal Court included Prince of the Food Bowl, Scrappy, Duke of the Chew Toy, Diego, Duke of the Fire Hydrant, and Thunder, the Knight of the Royal Court, Javi. So the San Antonio Humane Society's El Rey Fido fundraising competition has been held annually since 2002. And this year, get this, they raised over $50,000 wow. for the dogs and cats at the San Antonio Humane Society. It's what Fiesta is all about. Congratulations to Flag and his royal court. Precious. That was adorable. All right, so we know first weekend of Fiesta. Sarah Spivey, is the weather going to... You know, down a bit. I'm happy to report that if you want to enjoy some time outside, rain is really not going to be likely in San Antonio after about 11 o'clock this morning. It is, however, going to be chilly and cloudy throughout the day. Take a look at some of these KSAT Connect uh, pictures sent in when the most intense part of the storm was moving through San Antonio. Yeah, that's a lightning strike that's lighting this whole picture. It was pitch black outside, so a really cool picture there sent in near Fredericksburg and I-10. And then this picture, there was some smaller hail with some of that storm, not necessarily 
necessarily severe quarter sized hail, but there was some smaller hail. Here's a look at the radar right now. We're going to talk a little bit about how much rain we've seen in San Antonio and around San Antonio and talk about the more intense parts of the storm right now. So let's start with the most intense parts of the storm, which are south of San Antonio. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look down to the south uh, right here in parts of uh, Live Oak County uh, areas near McMullen County. This is where we've got a severe thunderstorm warning in effect until nine o'clock for the potential for some uh, quarter sized hail. Let's go ahead and take a trip up to the north nearer to Quero and Victoria, where we've got these purples. That's where we're also seeing some more intense parts of the storm capable of hail as well. And then in Atascosa County, southern Atascosa County, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause this and zoom in here along 37 right near Campbellton. That is a very intense uh, lightning uh, part of this storm again capable of probably some nickel sized hail not technically warned for severe hail of up to the size of quarters but still something we're going to be keeping uh, our eye on very carefully. All right, back over towards San Antonio, you'll notice that a lot of the rain has really started to come to an end. It's still raining steadily over Seguin, Shirts, downtown San Antonio and parts to the south, but we have started to see clearing. Areas to the north are not going to be seeing any more rain today. So we're talking about Chavano Park, the Rim, Bernie, even New Braunfels. It's starting to, uh, it's, uh, the rain is stopping, the rain is ending in those areas. And so it is just still going to be a cloudy day though, we just won't really see uh, much of that uh, rain for the remainder of the day. So let's go ahead and take a look at some rainfall amounts because some areas did end up getting some good rainfall uh, this morning, mainly through central parts of Bear County out toward Medina Lake. Anywhere you see this uh, yellow color, that's about two inches of radar estimated rain. Unfortunately, it's the northern part of Bear County and up toward Bernie and Comfort that really did not get all that much rain. And these are the areas that have really bad drought conditions right now. So only a couple of hundredths to a tenth of an inch of rain in some of those areas. But one of the areas that got a bullseye of the rain, a lot like the last couple of days was the downtown area from Monta Vista all the way down to Memorial High School. These areas saw two plus inches of radar estimated rainfall. Very good rain in those areas. Now as we take a look at the forecast again, the future cast does show that rain coming to an end in San Antonio by about lunch and then heaviest of the rain will impact areas in east of San Antonio out toward Lavaca County, Carnes County, DeWitt County later on this afternoon. Meanwhile, we're going to stay cloudy around San Antonio during the day and through tomorrow, there is the potential for a bit of drizzle, especially in the morning hours, but it's going to stay cloudy. So cloudy and chilly, not only today, but also tomorrow. Now, taking a look at your case at 12 hour forecast again, temperatures in the mid 50s right now. It's going to be windy all day with north winds at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. This afternoon, the rain comes to an end, but it is going to be still cool with a high only of 58 and will be in the mid 50s later on tonight as well and windy. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at your planning forecast. Tomorrow we're going to be seeing some drizzle in the morning. It'll stay cloudy and a high only of 63. Then as we head to the week, warming back up into the 80s, some rain is possible Tuesday and Wednesday night, but it looks great for Thursday and Friday. Battle of Flowers, high of 83. It'll be nice and cool in the morning for part of the parade. One thing I want you to be careful about is traveling on the roads this morning because we did get a lot of rain. Here's a look at Transguide right now. This is I-10 at Calibra and you can see that low level area is flooded. Uh, so these are the typical spots that we see flooding issues. So just please use caution on the roads. If you see rain on uh, water on the ground or coming over a low water crossing, just remember turn around. Don't drown. Yeah, and if you live in those areas like where you know, like, yeah. you know, 35 and Splash Town exit right there, always water does the same thing. Yeah. Um, you know, San Pedro Creek area. So if you, people know if they're living there, but if you don't have to be out and about still, maybe just kind of take it easy yeah. this morning. Again, the rain is coming to an end around San Antonio and all that water will drain out. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 821, 54 degrees. Next, okay, this story is crazy. Six cattle found dead in three different Texas counties. What the Madison County Sheriff's Office is saying about the incident. Now to this bizarre story, there were no signs of struggle, no blood spills, 
and no noticeable tracks after six cattle were found dead with all of their tongues missing in three separate Texas counties just northeast of College Station. So the Madison County Sheriff's Office posted about the cattle on social media. Ranchers told police that the cows were found lying on their sides with cuts along their jaw lines. The Madison County Sheriff's Office says there have been similar incidents to this one that have been reported across the U.S. They ask if you have any information or have experienced something similar with your cattle, contact investigator Foster, that number on the bottom of your screen right now, 936-348-2755 during business hours. Time now, 826, 54 degrees out. Chief Justice John Roberts declining to testify at the Supreme Court ethics hearing next month about Justice Clarence Thomas, why he's declining, and what one senator is saying. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It is April 23rd. Is that? Got it. Got it. Nice. You know, Big win it, for the day. It was a loud morning, especially yeah. I, I'm sure if you wa are watching right now, you're probably woken up by all the lightning and thunder around 6 a.m. Really not the case anymore in San Antonio, but I do know that there are other areas of our viewing area that are still experiencing some heavy rain, Sarah. Yeah, that's exactly right, especially south and east of San Antonio. Outside right now, though, you can see that this is the calm after the storm. It's still very cloudy, though, and it's going to stay cloudy all day long for us today. 55 degrees outside right now. Winds are still gusting from the north up to 25 miles per hour. That cold air moving in from the north. Here's a look at the radar right now, and you can see there is still some light rain in southern Bear County, but the heavier of the storms is moving through parts of Atascosa County, parts of Carnes County, DeWitt County, Gonzalez County also getting in on some of the showers and storms. But all of the severe weather has moved well to the south of San Antonio, and we're actually going to start to see the rain completely move out of here, even though there's still some rain in North Texas. This is all because of a cold front that moved through. Take a look at these temperatures. It's 55 in San Antonio, but it's 36 in Amarillo. And it's 77 down in Brownsville, so nearly a 40 plus degree temperature difference from the panhandle to the valley. A big difference in temperatures. Now we're not going to get down into the 30s and 40s, but all day today we are going to see temperatures in the 50s. Take a look at the day today. It's raining right now, but we do expect that rain to come to an end in the afternoon. Only a couple of isolated showers. 58 for the high today, and again, gusty winds from the northeast up to about 30 miles per hour. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the more intense parts of the storms on the radar. I'm going to be tracking them for our communities south and east of San Antonio, and I'll tell you what you can expect for the first full week of Fiesta coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. So through the morning, we've been keeping an eye on CPS outages. Now, this morning at 6 a.m., we had about 2,500 people without power. At 8 a.m., we had about 12,000, and right now the latest numbers show about 8,000 total customers affected. So if you don't have power, if you're watching us on your phone or any other social platform, you are not alone. I know CPS is out and about doing what they can to fix the problems. Now to the latest in news, new details on a warning from the Bear County Sheriff's Office about a wanted Uber driver. That's right, they say he's wanted for sexual assault. Now this is a photo of the suspect, 30-year-old Luis De Leon Jr. BCSO says he was last seen driving a 2022 white Toyota Camry and is believed to be on the run heading to Las Vegas. So BCSO did release his license plate and that license plate reads SPP7337. Also, a potential for him to actually have a temporary license plate. That one would read 2325Y59. Anyone with any information about his whereabouts, you are urged to contact BCSO, their tip hotline. That number on your screen, 210-335-8477. Overseas now to the situation in Sudan where fighting between the army and a paramilitary group is in its second week. And the situation for those hoping to get out is increasingly dangerous. Here's ABC's James Longman with the latest. This morning, personnel from the U.S. Embassy in Khartoum are safely out of the country, rescued in an overnight mission by U.S. Special Operations Forces. The Pentagon called the operation fast and clean, saying three Chinook helicopters flew from a U.S. base in Djibouti more than 800 miles through the pitch black darkness. On the ground for less than an hour, they saved dozens of people, including Americans from the embassy and other nationals, before making the 800-mile trip back. 
President Biden praising the unmatched skill of the hundred or so special operation forces members involved. This as leaders across the world scramble to pull their nationals out of Sudan, a shaky ceasefire giving only a small window of opportunity. Pulling U.S. citizens out of a war zone is always a challenge. Uh, in the case of Sudan, it's particularly hard because Sudan is so far inland. Now that the airfield has been closed, the airspace has been closed. Saudi Arabia saying they've evacuated their first group of foreign nationals. Evacuees seen disembarking from a Saudi ship Saturday. The Saudi foreign ministry claiming they were able to evacuate 157 people from 12 countries. The fighting between the two warring military groups has only escalated as it enters its second week. Gunfire heard in Khartoum during a 72-hour ceasefire announced by both sides Friday to observe the Muslim holiday of Eid al-Fitr. The Sudanese armed forces saying the rapid support forces breached the truce before it started, therefore there is no truce. The conflict has already claimed at least 400 lives, including one American. With the embassy closed, thousands more are stranded there. All she wants is to be brought home now. Massachusetts mum Trillian Clifford and her 18-month-old daughter are both trapped in Sudan. Clifford working abroad as a teacher. They're just told, sit tight, sit tight, wait it out. How do you wait out a war? Well, Chief Justice John Roberts is declining to directly respond to a Senate Judiciary Committee request for him to testify at a Supreme Court ethics hearing next month. So the hearing request comes after a pro ProPublica report showed a GOP mega donor subsidized luxury travel for Justice Clarence Thomas. Thomas says he didn't list the trips and other perks in his financial filings because he didn't know to include them. Roberts is not expected to get subpoenaed. Well, the NAACP filing a lawsuit in response to new Mississippi laws that expand state law enforcement reach into the city of Jackson. Mississippi's governor signed a bill that will expand the jurisdiction of the state-controlled Capitol Police from around state buildings to nearly the entire city. The NAACP alleges that the moves are a way to silence dissent by city residents and strip them of voting power and a voice in electing judges and district attorneys. Bed Bath & Beyond has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection following years' long effort to stay afloat. Stores and websites of the retailer will remain open, according to company officials. And for those wanting a New Orleans-like party, you won't have to travel far today. All right, this is this is it. Are you going today? I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. The rain's put me in like a low-key mood. Same. All right, so the Taste of New Orleans in full swing at the Sunken Gardens yesterday. The best part, it's happening later today as well. Camelia Juarez takes us on a trip to the Paris of the South. Everywhere you look, people are biting into the savory flavors of New Orleans. Cajun, Creole, fish. The sounds of soul echoed through the sunken gardens. Yes, it was so soulful. You could just tell it was coming from a different place, and it, it was just amazing. This San Antonio couple visits New Orleans often. Like, this is one of the events I don't want to miss, like, seriously. And they say this Fiesta event tastes authentic. It's a good mix to have yeah, yeah. here when, you know, you're not, you can't fly to New Orleans or travel to New Orleans. Some of the food was a little exotic. Well, I wasn't going to eat nothing crazy. I seen frog legs. I was like, mm -mm, I'm not eating that. Plenty of people were trying new foods like alligator on a stick. The vendor selling it says the gator meat comes straight from the Big Easy. Everybody asks what it tastes like. It does not taste like chicken. It does not taste like chicken. It's tender like it. It's got its own flavor to it. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Camilio Juarez. I gotta get some of the gator on a stick. It's actually really good. Okay. Oh, I got a big reason to go today, and I say today because it is the last day to explore the taste of New Orleans. It starts about an hour and a half, 10 a.m., and it goes until 10 this evening. And like Sarah Spivey said, it should clear up for the afternoon. There you go. Okay, and don't forget to show us your pictures and videos from Fiesta by sharing them on KSAT Connect. Your pictures could be featured online or on air. Just open the KSAT Weather Authority app, visit the KSAT Connect webpage. We have easy instructions online on how to submit your photos. And do you have plans for Battle of Flowers Parade? Well, come join us at the KSAT Insider Parade viewing party. Get your tickets. You can watch the parade from up above in the grandstands. You'll get tacos from Las Palapas, access to private restrooms, which is huge during all the... Big deal. <laughs> yeah, big deal. Plus, you get to hang out with the KSAT crews. To get the tickets, it's easy. Go to KSAT.com. Sign up to be a KSAT insider if you're not already. And that's where you'll find all the information. 
private restrooms are always clean. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and don't forget, if you can't make it out to any of the Fiesta parades, you can catch all the action right here on TV. I know so many people have fear of missing out, so don't worry. We're going to be broadcasting the Texas Cavaliers River Parade tomorrow, Battle of Flowers next Friday, Fiesta Flambeau on Saturday, all right here, KSAT 12, and of course, all of our digital platforms. Okay, so I'll be out at the Battle of Flowers. Okay. And so so will Sarah. So Spidey. everyone go out there. And hopefully we can get Max out there too. Max will be in studio, but I'll be talking to you the whole time. No, maybe after you maybe. come out. You know, come it's, on, a, it's a big, we'll play it by ear if the show is not over by that point. But if you have any questions, if you want to get the tickets, if you want to register, join us out there. Pull out the phone, scan the QR code, it'll take you right there. Not only do you get all the insider information, you get a full list of all the events, the tickets, and the schedules. And I know for so many families who are new to San Antonio, this list has been vital for them to like keep up with all the events, because there is a lot. Okay, so I was at Alamo Heights night the other day, and someone was like, oh, this is my first fiesta, can you help? I was like, okay. Just give them the app. Give them the app. There you go. KSAT.com. Just shameless yep. plugs right. to the KSAT.com. All right, 840, 54 degrees. Sights and sounds from one event that helps event. kids learn engineering skills. We'll tell you all about it coming up. All right, so while they're building cars, we're telling people who have cars to avoid this area. Look at this. This is I-10 at Calabra. And look, if you're from San Antonio, you know those spots that flood very easily. We saw a lot of weather this morning, so if you are out and about, make sure to drive safely. Be smart. If anything else pops up, we'll keep you posted. And I'm actually looking at the radar right now. Like Sarah said, calm after the storm early this morning. A lot of thunder and lightning. But what is the rest of our day going to be like? We know a lot of Fiesta events happening. Sarah Spivey, let us know when we come back. Fiesta Gifts Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Have some laughs and you could be helping Fiesta give back this season. 73 years ago, members of San Antonio's theater community were left highly amused after attending a coronation ceremony. They put on their own satirical ceremony, poking fun at the traditions of the local elite, and the rest is history. Corniation is now one of Fiesta's hottest tickets, annually lampooning San Antonio's social elites. But the party of Royal Shade is also a party with a purpose, contributing to a plethora of nonprofit organizations. Over the years, Corniation has helped raise over $3 million dollars for charities like San Antonio AIDS Foundation, Beat AIDS, the Thrive Youth Center, and scholarship recipients from area high schools. So head out to the Charlene McCombs Empire Theater this season and have some laughs at Fiesta's expense. You'll have a great time, all while helping Fiesta give back. Okay, it's a race like no other that brings out the best of the best, and we're talking about the Young Minds of San Antonio. It is so awesome. So it's the annual solar car race. It's an after-school project that helps kids learn about engineering. And our photojournalist, Santiago Esparza, he was there yesterday capturing all of the hard work. B E 14 With solar panels, and you try and get first on, like, speed but if you don't cross the finish line it's okay because sometimes they like let you uh, get fourth because of your speed or something like that. Me it's like finishing because a lot of cars uh, don't make it because of like they their guide wire wasn't lined up or their solar panel wasn't facing the sun. And we actually talked to the students and they're the ones that came up with this idea that why don't we build a solar race car. Well we had no idea how to build a solar race car so we all sort of learned together and uh, the way we started out is we worked the project with them and then we found out that there were some schools in Houston that were already doing the project with NASA. So we invited them to come race against us and that's where it got everything started. We are having our 26th anniversary of the solar car race day here in Northside. We have been working hard the last eight to 10 weeks, all of the students that you see here today um, in building a solar car. So they learn all about uh, the mechanics of a solar car and then they work to build one with their teacher sponsor on campus after school, it's an after school club. And then today is where all their work comes to a culmination. They get to race it, see how they do, put the engineering skills uh, to, to the test. Were you, were you rooting for one? I was. You picked far left. I did, and they didn't yeah. win. I thought I was yeah. going to take it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hey, but 
they had plenty of sun yesterday. Oh, they did. Yeah, Absolutely. But what a weather whiplash, right? So beautiful and sunny yesterday. Today we've been dealing with the rain. It's been a rainy morning around San Antonio. And while a lot of the heavier rain is ending in San Antonio, there's still some very heavy rain and some thunderstorms for our communities south of San Antonio and Atascosa County, but especially in Live Oak County area. We're seeing some of the, this particular thunderstorm is capable of uh, quarter sized hail and that Severe thunderstorm warning goes in effect until 9 o'clock. We'll be keeping an eye on that. But if you are under that severe thunderstorm warning, please go inside away from windows. You'll be just fine if you do that. A lot of lightning out in Goliad County and in Victoria right now, as well as near Edna. This is where the intense part of the storm is right now. And in our viewing area, the most intense part of the storms are actually right on that Atascosa and uh, Carnes County line. You can see perhaps even some pea sized hail there in the northern part of Live Oak County as this storm is moving east at about 25 miles per hour. Also seeing plenty of lightning in Pearsall and even near Divine. There's some lightning occurring outside of the storm center still left over in San Antonio. We do have some light rain showers moving through areas nearer to JBSA Lackland, also near Palo Alto College. As we take a closer look along some neighborhoods between Mitchell Lake and Calaveras Lake and near, like Elmendorf. That's where we've got some of that light rain near Adkins as well and Lavernia. But again, notice that things have really started to clear around San Antonio and we're going to continue to see this entire complex push off to the south and to the east throughout the remainder of the day. But here's a look at some of those pictures. Take a look at this morning. Oops, of course this would happen. Let me see if I can try to bring it up right now. This is on our fancy iPad of all things. There we go. Do we get it? Let's see. Okay. Come on, Come on iPad. Oh, hey, there it is. Okay. So this is a look at, at later last, uh, pardon me, earlier this morning, we were really waking up around five, six with a lot of lightning in San Antonio. We saw some small hail in places, but nothing like this. This was out in Cuero, uh, part of the KSAT 12 viewing area, close to 720 this morning. Golf ball sized hail fell in Cuero. By the way, this person earns an A on their storm chasing test because they put something <laughs> that I can compare the size of the hail to right next to it. I uh, hope that everything is okay down there in Quero. Thank you for submitting this picture to our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. All right, let's take a look at rain chances for the remainder of the day. It's going to be clearing out in San Antonio, but staying cloudy. We'll, uh, by the afternoon, there's really only going to be a couple of isolated showers out there, and it's going to be chilly. So if you have fiesta plans, things look good for your outdoor activities later on today, especially in the afternoon. But it is going to stay cloudy. It's 56 degrees at the airport. Still some light rain ring reported at the airport. Northeast winds at 10 miles per hour. Take a look at these temperatures plummeting behind that front. 46 in Rock Springs, 50 in Kerrville, 47 in Fredericksburg. It's still in the 70s in Laredo and Corpus Christi where this front has yet to move through. A little bit closer of a view, 52 in Bandera, 52 in Bernie, and 55 at Stinson. We are going to continue to see windy conditions gusts up to about 30 miles per hour. And in your KSAT 12 hour forecast, again, rain right now, but that rain will be done by noon. And in the afternoon, uh, just a windy, cloudy day with northeast winds at about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Then this evening, temperatures cool down even more into the mid, low to mid 50s. Tomorrow, going to stay cloudy tomorrow and even some drizzle in the morning. So not the best forecast for the river parade, but still cloudy and cool. Just bring that jacket with you. As far as we uh, go uh, throughout the rest of the week, warming up with a chance for storms Tuesday and Wednesday night, then really nice for Thursday and Battle of Flowers. We'll be back right after the break. All right, a last look at the radar before you go. We're still waiting on the pollen count, but as soon as we get that in, I'll post that on ksat.com. We've got some light rain moving through San Antonio. This will be the last of the rain for the day. Honestly, it's the heavier stuff south and east that I'll be keeping an eye on throughout this morning. Severe weather threat is very low. As we take a look at the ksat 12 hour forecast rain right now, temperatures in the mid 50s, but by this afternoon, only an isolated shower is possible. So still get out there and enjoy Fiesta. You just need that jacket with 
with you because it's going to be some 25 degrees colder than average with a high of only 58 and northeast winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Now tomorrow we are going to have some patchy drizzle in the morning and it's going to stay cloudy. So another unseasonably cool day before we warm back up into the 70s and 80s by Tuesday and Wednesday. You know, this is pretty honestly uh, normal for Fiesta. We get all kinds of weather because we get these cold fronts moving through mm -hmm. and we could use the rain. At least Battle of Flowers looks gorgeous. Just heard a little bit of thunder. Yeah, I just heard a little it too. bit of thunder. I haven't heard it in like the last hour and a half. Yeah. Starting to move south. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Enjoy Thank you so your much Sunday. For with us. Happy Fiesta.